Okay, right off the bat, folks, I got this footage from the 7th of this month. And basically, we got to, I froze this here object here, as you see there. And we're going to take a look at it with the magnifying glass real fast. I think we're going to start doing like magnifier a lot more from now on, even though I'm not running away from the picture or anything like that. And there you go. We got another, uh, we've got another speedy, I call it, because basically this thing just comes into effect. And also that other object that's up a little higher, if I start moving my cursor, it'll mess it up. But that other object is also uh, pretty much something that's rotating the opposite direction. Now, Earth and everything goes counterclockwise. So that's our speedy right there. And then we're going to pop back out. And we'll see, because it's a 17 second mark, I think. And everything else on the uh, sun, you know, Earth, everything rotates counterclockwise. I said it wrong that one day when I was doing the deal that I fixed it on my title. Uh, and then this here is rotating clockwise. Now, I believe a, lot, a bunch of us guys found this last fall and it's been known for a few years, quite a few years by quite notable people that have been watching Soho ever since it started. This is on Core 2 and Basically, we'll, we'll kind of try to see, we'll just basically go back and play the beginning of the, or maybe we'll be able to see if we can just, let's just skip real fast and see if we can get when the speedy comes in here by hitting them. And there it went. That's how fast that came by. And then this is what causes, when, you, when we play this movie now, that speedy that I just showed you at the 17 minute mark, and now we're at 18, uh, it basically, uh, I think it's like 18 seconds, but you've seen that. It flashed by there if you've seen it when we're playing. So watch it when it gets in this area on the play bar, okay? Because this is what starts everything going crazy with the sun. As it came by, I broke the magnetical field and basically gives it uh, you know, a chakra. It's like, wow, it's got to do something to grab onto the planets. It's pretty much what's going on. Sun's doing its normal. I mean... Not really normal. I mean, this is maximum as far as I'm concerned. And there we go. And it's rotating. And then the sun doesn't like that. And I'll show you in another video because basically, and then you go, that that came by, that speedy came by, and then it just broke the magnetic on, and then the sun just goes ape poop. I'm always watching full screen. So we'll bring this back again, and then we'll try to freeze it at the, at the 17... Maybe hopefully we'll get to like the 15, 16 second mark and you'll see speedy. Another speedy, you understand what I'm saying? Because basically, uh, now when this when this object first comes in, remember it's going, to, it goes clockwise around the sun. And then uh, we're going to, it didn't like that. So it's basically, this is the outer limits of the magnetical field of doing its CME reactive flares that the sun does, uh, which basically are CMEs. And then we see what we call a CME reactor flare, what all the planets do when the CMEs that come off the sun get that blast of uh, electrical energy. Flames, basically, electrical energy, though, dissipating off. Because a flame will burn longer in a vacuum tube in uh, space. NASA proved that and showed that to us. Okay, so here we are at, just before that's coming in, the other one, as you see, there's something here too. There, you're gonna blow up. It's just gonna, you know, be whatever it is. Like I don't know. I guess we could go ahead and blow that up because that's the precursor to what we got coming in on our speedy. I think you guys originally seen my speedy, and I can't. I don't want to touch the screen up there because then it's just gonna mess it up. But there, we got that there, and then we will go ahead and hit. Uh, let's minus this out of here, and then let's hit. Try to get ourselves caught. And then that's gone. And now we should probably get speedy to come in. And here it's going to blast us because it's going to be right at 16 or 17. Now watch where that comes from. And here we go. And then we get another little shot of something right there. And then... And there it is, bamo. 
So, that just barely missed the sun. Whatever the heck it was. So, let's go check some other footage out. Now, a long time watchers, this is the first time we've seen the sun go eight crap like this. I froze it at the end. And what we'll do too is we'll just zoom in real fast on our uh, mass object that's up there by the sun. And that's right there. You see that there. So it's out there. It's not going away anytime soon. And basically we'll get another good little view of that here in a second. Because there's a block. When I play the player, we'll get a nice little shot of it down on the right hand side. So we'll come back over here and we'll just hit play. And we also got that at the 19 minute mark. We'd like to magnify our glass out with us. And I think I can keep it and go to full yeah and then we'll just uh get our magnifying glass out and we should be able to page up as you see you got your mass object there and basically i guess i'm better off looking at it on the not full screen so we'll pop out of here real fast And there you go, you get this here. So we're getting, basically we're starting to find the twinkle twinkle little star twinkle between the sun and whatever. So I'll drag this back and play this one real fast for you. And we'll even go to full screen for, for a second real fast. So you'll end up seeing that at the top. And this is what was going on just before uh, the other action. And I'm starting to wonder if that's our cruiser there too, to the left hand side of the sun, the low. And here's Lasco C2. Matter of we'll pump this up too, just to the full strength, and you can go ahead and watch. You'll see those basically massive planets that are triangulated here. I'm gonna point some of these out. There's one here, one there. One there, and there's some more over here. So I'll drag this back real fast, and you can see that. I'm not going to waste time editing that out. Apologize if there's any advertising there, and you'll just, you'll see these planets in there. So there's tons of stuff in our areas. There's probably way more than Mars when it comes to. Now, in just a second, I'll take you to a, a coordinates on this stuff, and we'll zoom in here on this stuff real fast from pump it one more time. And basically, we'll be able to watch this stuff over here because they're basically cheating on me because I can try to pump this up, and I had problems earlier them screwing around with me and not uh, being able to. But you can see just to, that we're at this size here that these stars which are suns out there, they do the magnetical communications also as you watch them here as we go through this play here. Okay, It's not just the sun that they're getting the light from. It is illuminating them to the side, but they're also illuminated out there. If there was no sun, those would be our next somewhat closest suns. So we'll zoom out this a little bit. And then you got Mercury there. You can even see the equilaterals picking up on the mercury pretty good there. Matter of fact, I'll blow in on that. We'll scoot over a little bit. A little bit more. Get the magnifying glass out. And pump that up a little bit. Get a good look at mercury. You can see the equilateral kind of splinking out on mercury a little bit. Okay. And remember, Mercury is just a exact, pretty much exact, not ex to the Nats ass, but pretty darn close to the same size as the moon. Basically, Mercury is just uh, a moon of the sun, basically. Okay, and I get the magnifying glass and get out of here and see that we're looking at that stuff there. And let me go ahead and... Now, here's a good example, because around the 18th, they would uh, basically go ahead and just uh, mark anything that we'd see coming by on B... So as you see, we don't basically have anything rotating around at that current time on the 18th. 
So, and remember, it was going the opposite direction of of uh, our rotation on the sun. Now remember, we can see off into space whatever wants to shine, infinite almost mileage, because basically we're just looking out into space off of these cameras, okay? So there's tons of stuff that's here, and then basically we're very much interested in these finds that we've got here, of all this here, and we're gonna get a look at that, because basically all we know that, if we can match that up to the constellations, but that's the bright stars in the, on those constellations. So we're gonna take, and there are a lot of people been wondering about that, I'm gonna take and get us to Stellarium in one of these next few videos and take a look and see what we've got on these by looking at this footage. Now this is the life of a star, okay? Protostar, main sequence, supergiant, red giant, planetary nebula, and then it turns into a white dwarf. After 10 billion years, at least our sun will do that. Okay, and then we're going to come down here, we're going to look at 3D of the local, this is the nearby known stars in 3D, okay? And basically, units in light years and distance and separation and stuff like that, they pretty much have them just lined up in light years away from the sun, okay? And we can go ahead and here look at this stuff. And basically I have to do what I have to do to keep sound going because they always try to steal my sound. They don't like, for some reason, a free education of what's out in space. Uh, people will start trying to, don't give secret societies that much credit. All I do is got a lot of money. And it's always, a group of a bunch of rich people which basically they don't want to give each other their own money either they just try to watch each other's backs and then eventually they get scared and try to stab somebody in the back or so they got all this stuff around by the sun and that's pretty much 3d how we sit in a cubic block out there in space so what I'm beginning to believe that some of those could possibly be our stars. Yep. Now, everybody going to jump off the bat. Remember, that's too low for Vega on that angle. So, Vega is not one of them. And there's Vega A and there's Vega B. And there's 27 uh, light years between Rigel Cantaris B and Rigel Cantaris A. Okay. And I showed you Proximity Centauri down here, I believe. So, uh, is that Proximity? There's Regal Cantaris B. So, Regal and Proximity Centauri. We'll try to find a distance between them. See, this is why we're getting the heat here on Earth, because Rigel Cantaris A and Proximity Centauri are not that far apart from each other, okay? And then you see that how massive the distance is, okay? So there's just a crap load of distance between these objects that you see because the satellites are so far out, apart of each other. Now, it's 15.020 AU, okay? Apart, and then that's the one point. Three nine six two trillion miles. Okay, that's what those two stars are apart from each other. Remember, Vega's not in that group, I don't believe, because it's very far up and to the right, and I'll be able to show you that in a minute. Now, hang on a second and check this out. And let me give you another shot of Uranus again, because the idea we're not going to see Uranus for a long time. Let me show you what they're blocking also on uh, the. Uh, well, let me show you. And here's Proximity Centauri. So it's 4.28 light years from Earth. Earth is a 3,000 K temperature range. It's a large K size. Luminosity is low, though. I'm going to take a quick look at Uranus, blow it up a little bit. So we get real lucky to be able to see Uranus because it's 19 light years away from Earth. And it's real hard to zoom in on it, and there it is right there zoomed in. So, because it's a black dark in the darkness of Earth, well, space. So there you go, Uranus way out there. And this, the sun's magnetical knows when it's little baby Uranus 
which is huge, starts getting a little bit too close to it. It doesn't like it, and it has a nice reactive flare to it. Uranus got as close as it can to get to the sun right there.